Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Ah, Friday afternoon. This is Think Tech. I'm Jay Fidel. That's David, David Bernal. Bernal. Yeah. Uh, David is a, a, an intern here with us at Think Tech, and we thought we'd expose him to the, the Sturm and the Drung of doing a talk <laughs> show with us. <laughs> okay, and David is a senior. Uh, David has graduated mm -hmm. from uh, Kamehameha Schools this coming May. Yeah, yeah, this May. So this would be his last semester. Exciting. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, we, we really like having you as, a, uh, as a, an intern, right. and uh, you've been helping us, and we really appreciate that. And we really appreciate Kamehameha Schools. Right. They're one of our underwriters, which we appreciate a lot, you know. Um, so, David, tell us about life in school. Tell us about where you are. We want to sort of get inside your head, your skin, and mm -hmm. see how it looks from your point of view, all right? And I'm going to be asking you a lot of questions about that. Right. So... Tell me how it is. Well, personally, um, I've had a bit of an interesting journey through school. Um, through intermediate, I've kind of started off like kind of at the top of my class, um, and I was moving through everything really fast. But once I came to Kamehameha um, High School, uh, my whole world was flipped. Um, honestly, I didn't know what to think. I didn't know what to expect. But I knew at some point that things were going to be different. Um, and then as I got older and bolder, I kind of learned more about the world, you know? When did you uh, enter Kamehameha? Um, I came in in freshman year. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you've had the, at least the full high school right, experience full anyway. High school. Yeah. So uh, older and bolder, my goodness gracious. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. Tell us about the transition. I mean, I'm really, I really appreciate you being candid with us and telling mm -hmm. us about your life and telling us about your student experience because I am actually going to apply to Kamehameha myself. Oh, really? I want, I want to have the same experience. I want to learn from you. Yeah? You can always be on the wait list. <laughs> <laughs> After a while, yeah? Right. <laughs> so what has it been like? You know, you say you've changed. This is a remarkable you know, journey, as you said. Mm -hmm. um, tell us about that journey. Um, I guess one of the greatest things that I've learned was definitely perspective. Um, I was able to see a lot of different viewpoints, um, but specifically my viewpoint towards school has changed a lot. Um, specifically, I'd say um, I definitely see a lot of things wrong with just school in general, with the way how it is, and I'm, I'd like to see it different. I'd like to change that. In what way? Um, one of the biggest ways are um, the grading system and um, the content learned. I feel that the grading system doesn't really support um, learning. I feel like it supports memorization and regurgitation, and I don't like that. Mm -hmm. um, I'm learning throughout like just authentic learning experiences, like um, chasing a project or doing something that you're really interested in. There's always failure throughout the entire process. From beginning to end, there's failure. But the success comes when you look towards that failure and you learn something from it. And I feel like school doesn't truly support the whole process. They just support the end result. Mm, the success. Mm, right, the success. Yeah, but you, you, know, you get a depth out of failure. Right. It's like every entrepreneur, we'll talk about that in a little right. while, has to have some failures mm -hmm. to be a successful entrepreneur. It's part of the program. Right. I, I'll take a moment. Uh, I should tell you how we met. We did right. meet. Uh, so Kamehameha Schools had a partnership program with, um, with um, uh, Oceanit, which is across the street. And Oceanit uh, wanted to mm, do, some, do some public familiarization uh, with uh, AI, artificial intelligence. So they publicized this program, which is at the Halau property, mm -hmm. right near Teddy's Be Better right. Burgers. Yeah. Hello, uh, Inanna. Uh, yeah, which is um, really a beautiful space. Mm -hmm. And we went, and that's where they had this AI program to familiarize people who wanted to know more about it. And I decided I had to go because I need to know more about AI. I still need to know more about, you know, it's, I mean, every, every, you know, every time you look at these tech journals and newsletters, they tell you about 
things that AI is doing and how it's going to affect our lives and change our world. So I wanted to go down there and learn. And the guy sitting next to me in this program, which was very good, okay, uh, was David. And, um, and I'm stumbling and bumbling around the computer. I forget why I was, I was just stumbling and bumbling that day. And I would turn to him and I would say, can you help me? I, I can't follow these guys. Because it was a hands-on discussion. This was one of those programs. It was very good. Oceanit did a good job. Ian Kitachima, other fellow from Oceanit, uh, talking about AI. And um, you had to follow along on the computer. Um, the best way to learn, really. And uh, so David helped me through that, and I appreciated that. And I said, hmm, this is an unusual person. Let's, <laughs> let's do more of David. <laughs> so I suggested he come down and take a look at the studio, right. and the rest is history. Now he's an intern with us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, your interest, I mean, you have to have some interest if you knew that much about computers and AI. Mm -hmm. uh, where does that fit in your life? Where has that fit in your life? Well, personally, this kind of goes back to um, that throwback that you called to entrepreneurship. Um, eventually, I want to run my own company. And I know that if I want to run my own company, I have to be able to do everything from the bottom to the top, at least at some point. So I figured um, computers and all these different aspects of technology um, are essential to a business in the modern day. OK. So you took it further than that, though. You're more mm -hmm. than just a, a, a budding millennial. <laughs> <laughs> you have a, a, I don't want to say an academic, but a practical interest at the least right. in knowing how this stuff works and in being good at it. You are good at it. I, I can <laughs> tell you that. I can tell you that. <laughs> um, how deep are you involved in this sort of thing with computers, computer mm -hmm. programming, coding, with learning as many you know, products as you can find, mm -hmm. and studying AI as well? Well, earlier you just mentioned um, practical experience, and that's actually where I gained everything from, and that's um, through different experiences that I've gained throughout internships and just um, different shadowings. Um, most one of the um, one of the most recent ones was the Altino coding classes. Um, Oceanit also had um, Altino programming, where they teach teachers how to code, so that they can teach their students how to code. And I was, I first started off in the program, but then eventually I became one of the student instructors there. Ah, hence your title on the lower third of our movie here. Um, student slash instructor. So you're a student instructor at, yes. at Kamehameha schools in general, eh? I guess you could say that. All right. Well, what are you a student in, uh, to the extent that you major in anything, and what are you an instructor in? Um, for a student, I'd say that more of a broad term where um, I'm just really interested in learning things. And um, when something captures my interest, I kind of just dive into it. And I really just get lost in it. As far as the instructor point is, um, I said earlier that I taught um, coding to teachers and students and all this sort of like. Um, I've also done some work with, um, have you ever heard of design thinking? Sure, absolutely. Right. Ocean it, you didn't get to GM, a kid at GM had been doing that, you know, and publicizing that for years, yeah. Right. Out of uh, Stanford, yeah. it's important. Just um, last summer, I did a couple of the sessions with them, and I um, helped instruct them. Oh, really? Yeah. That's not easy. <laughs> okay, design thinking is a way of thinking, it's a way of solving problems. Right. It's a way of mm, analyzing the problem to the point where you really understand what the problem is. Right. and then taking certain specific logical steps to solve the problem. It's very important in, in entrepreneurial activity, right. but it's also important in life in general, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you give me your definition of design thinking? Hmm. To me, design thinking is, instead of working around a solution, you work with a problem, and each step creates a more effective solution. So it's incremental. Right. Um, one of the biggest aspects of design thinking is empathy. And that's being able to connect with your consumer base. The person who has a problem. Right. And you help him understand the problem. Right. Because otherwise, he may, he may be overcome, over, overtaken, right. o overwhelmed by the problem. And he doesn't know right. what his real problem is. Right. <laughs> a lot of times, that's the case where someone thinks they have a problem. Um, 
but actually the problem is in a completely different direction. Very valuable, very valuable to have that, wow. So you, you teach that? Yes. Wow, okay. So around this has got to be a, a world view, mm -hmm. okay? And um, I want to know what the world view is. We're going to delve into that. We're going to ask you hard questions about that right after this break. Right. Haven Brunau will be right back. You'll see. Ooh. Aloha. I'm Wendy Lowe, and I'm coming to you every other Tuesday at 2 o'clock live from Think Tech Hawaii. And on our show, we talk about taking your health back. And what does that mean? It means mind, body, and soul. Anything you can do that makes your body healthier and happier is what we're going to be talking about. Whether it's spiritual health, mental health, fascia health, beautiful smile health, whatever it means, Let's take healthy back. Aloha. Hello, I'm Yukari Kunisue. I'm your host of New Japanese Language Show on Think Tech Hawaii, called Konnichiwa Hawaii, broadcasting live every other Monday at 2 p.m. Please join us where we discuss important and useful information for the Japanese language community in Hawaii. The show will be all in Japanese. Hope you can join us every other Monday at 2 p.m. Aloha. David Bernal, never forget that name. He's here with us. He's an intern. He's a senior in Kamehameha Schools, and he's here to answer and to allow us um, to understand him better. Okay, so I'd like to know how you see the world. How, how do you see the world? You know, they say that these days, they say that the, the problem is that in the past, kids always thought um, that they would do, and their parents always thought, that kids would do better than they had done. Now it's not so clear, because the world, the economy, the system in general, this doesn't seem to be as promising as it used to be. How do you feel about that? Um, if you're asking for my perspective on the world and how I see it, um, I think I see it kind of exactly in the way of coding and design thinking, where there are problems and there are solutions, and you have to use different skill sets, different tool sets, like empathy, to reach out and find new problems and solutions. Yeah, OK. So what are the problems that you, I mean, personally, right. what are the problems you think you're going to have to cope with? What are the problems that you, know, that you feel you have to get over in order to get into the next chapter of your life? Um, I think one of the biggest problems um, and this applies everywhere, is sustainability. And this could be the environment, this could be the economy, this could be um, the education system, it's everywhere. Um, sustainability just means being able to do something over and over again. Yeah, but um, you want to do it over and over better, don't you? Right, over and over better. <laughs> <laughs> you know, our motto here is every day better. We really right. mean that. And we're not happy unless it's better tomorrow than it is today and better today than it was yesterday. And I, it's not a bad model to follow, I think. So, um, OK, so let's talk, let's break that down, right. unpack that, as they say. Uh, climate change, big threat to Hawaii. Right. Sea level rise. You have the possibility of extreme weather that could really bust us up good. Um, you have the possibility of a changing environment where a couple of degrees temperature in the, in this, in the ocean or on the land could, could affect the ecology in such a way so the place is not the same anymore. And there's not much we can do about it. We can you know, contribute a little bit um, to less fossil fuel and less carbon emissions. Mm -hmm. um, but we are somehow a, a vulnerable, very vulnerable to climate change. I mean, how do you feel about that? Does, that? does that affect your decision, ultimately the decision you're going to have to make about whether to live here or somewhere else? Um, a decision you have to make about occupation, about how you're going to invest your time, your life, your, your aspirations. Uh, how important is it for you? Um, I think it's both directly and indirectly vital to, I think, the future of um, Hawaii, the future of me, the future of everyone, because climate change in, is like our climate. It's everything that we live on. Um, and one of the things that I think we should focus on is um, changing things, not on just a small scale level, um, not just the personal level, 
um, but actually at the industry level. I think that's the biggest demographic or the biggest target audience to hit. Um, on a small scale, um, one person can only do so much. But when you have a whole industry um, making that change, making that effort, I think that you can really push for um, a better future. Mm. So you're talking about community and right. community building, mm -hmm. organizing people to do the right thing. Right. And that, that always has an intersection with technology these exactly. days, you know. So what is your thought about technology for you and for solving these larger community problems? Where does it fit? How do you say, how do you see yourself becoming, you know, um, a, a purveyor, a consumer of technology in order to create community? Mm. I think one of the biggest things that technology does is bring people together. Um, and I think that is what we can use technology um, for one of the main parts. Um, by bringing people together, we can unite for a common cause. Mm. So what might those causes be? I hang on every right. word. <laughs> <laughs> um, common causes. Um, again, one of the biggest ones, climate change. Um, by bringing people together with technology, we can have um, more sustainable mindsets and more sustainable lifestyles that can more positively impact our environment. Mm. So um, that does raise the, the specter, I say specter advisedly, of dealing with government. Right. Because we're in a, a kind of mm, perpetual crisis these days over government. And I wanna know your view of government, state and federal, if, if you mm -hmm. distinguish them. And I want to know how all of this uh, interacts, you know, the, the technology, climate concerns about climate change, the need for community to deal with these things, and government in general. What do you think of government, David? Well, I think government inherently doesn't have to be as messy as it is now. Um, personally, I think government um, kind of gets in the way of itself a lot. Um, because there are lots of rules and regulations and they are there for a reason, but I feel like sometimes that can inhibit um, sometimes the right course of action. Mm. So <clears throat> how is a young fellow from Hawaii, trained in a very good school, Kamehameha Schools, uh, going to make an impression on these things, either statewide, nationally, or globally? Do, do you have a sense that you could have an effect Mm, I think everyone has an effect to some degree. Um, it's just what you aspire to do and how that impacts the world. Okay. Do you have a, an idea about what you would do to have that effect? I mean, what course, what path mm -hmm. would you want to take to, to play out you know, your engagement with, with the world? Hmm. Part of this is occupation, right? It's a hint. <laughs> a hint. Um, I think I have to take the road least traveled, the most unconventional path. Um, and I feel like entrepreneurship would be probably the best course of action for that kind of impact. Hmm. Let's talk about that, entrepreneurship. You know, when I asked you a few days ago what you wanted to talk about, you, right. you, you talked about uh, entrepreneurship and, and uh, business education or right. entrepreneurship education. This is really sophisticated stuff that doesn't come easy because right. you know the notion of an entrepreneur kind of assumes that you don't have a business, right. that you have to create a business. Exactly. Okay, how did you get involved in that? What drew you to the, the subject of entrepreneurship and better yet, educating people in mm -hmm. entrepreneurship? Well, I'd like to say that it all started when I went to this networking event um, hosted at Halawi Nana. Um, there, I kind of uh, mingled a little bit, but after um, the event ended, I kind of stayed behind the scenes, and I saw some problems with like um, how everything was going, so I asked if I could help out a little bit, and eventually that turned into um, an internship, and I got to learn a lot from my um, bosses and mentors and job shadowings and everything. Through it, I was exposed to a lot of um, local companies and businesses, um, and I kind of just got this spark that 
I wanted to get involved with it. Hmm. Have you noticed yet that David is a really good listener? And he's, he's listening to you, he's completely aware. And then, you know, all this activity in his mind, he's able to articulate it. This, this is a, these are rare talents, you know. <laughs> listening is so important, but, but so is being able to articulate a position. So, okay, so uh, this is not easy to be an educator in entrepreneurship. And frankly, in this community, there aren't that many people who want to do that or can do that um, to help people build businesses that will have an impact, a positive impact on the community. How do you plan to, to do that? Well, by planning to do that, I would have to incorporate um, certain ethics or morals, but really just, I need to put the idea of sustainability into whatever I'm creating. Um, and that applies to all aspects of it. Um, through marketing, through product placement, through everything that the business is involved in, um, sustainability can be found. Okay, sustainability, going beyond climate change and, right. and all that environment, but going to uh, the, keeping this business going, right, the making it bigger and better all the time. Yeah. Right. What kind of business? You must um. have a business. You must <laughs> ideate a kind of business. Tell me in your imagination what kind of business is this? I want to create a business, essentially a school, um, and this school would be different from how school has been shaped since way back when, since the industrial era. Um, I want it to be sort of a modern school, something where um, you can learn in a way that's authentic. Hmm. Hmm. What's authentic learning? Tell me. Authentic learning um, is a messy process, and it's not about what your result is. It's about the progress from where you began and from where you ended up. It's outcomes. Right. So what's an outcome that you want to achieve in, in this messy learning process? Um, one of the most important um, things that I want are I want soft skills and I want hard skills. Um, hard skills like... Um, coding and editing and all those different um, things that you can put on paper. But then soft skills are things like design thinking, um, different mindsets that you mm, gain. Mm, mm. Wow, that's pretty interesting. So, um, you know, what, what really uh, interests me is that um, you're speaking about um, being, about teaching entrepreneurs, but also being an entrepreneur mm -hmm. to develop a school. So which is it? Um, what, what, is, what is the goal for you? to be the entrepreneur that builds the school, that teaches the entrepreneurs mm -hmm. to build more schools, mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> or to be the entrepreneur who is going to build a business um, using these principles? Well, I'm still young. I still have a lot of time to figure these things out. But I would like to create kind of a... a like a self-fulfilling system where mm. I can inspire more people to think um, with different perspectives and to have insight to look towards the community, look towards um, empathy, and have that drive mm. their ambition. How do you inspire people to do that? Inspire me now, <laughs> David. Say something to inspire me. Something to inspire you? Yeah. Hmm. I think inspiring people is not about um, the words you say. I think inspiring people comes from the actions that you do. So leadership by example. Exactly. So then you would lead in creating an entrepreneurial activity and show me how to do it. Yes. And you would somehow communicate the fact that it can be done. Right. And I should try that same thing too. But as you said before, in any entrepreneurial activity, building any kind of organization, you have to have multiple skills, right. hard skills. You have to know about bookkeeping and accounting. Right. You don't have, to have to know about law. You have to know about computers. You have to know about getting things done, organizing people, raising money, all these things. We do these, all these things here in ThinkTech, yeah? <laughs> Maybe that's why he's an intern. He's watching us. <laughs> 
So <clears throat> I guess uh, you have, you're going to go to college soon. I don't know if you're going to take a gap year or not, but ultimately you'll go, you'll go to college. And I, well, first, are you going to take a gap year? Um, I've been thinking that that would be really important to my growth as a person, as a student, um, even as an instructor, to really um, take the time to develop more of my um, hard skills and soft skills and maybe develop even more and more mindsets. Hmm. Okay. You haven't decided. You haven't until May to decide. And I have a while. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be checking in with you. <laughs> He's going to be an intern for us for a few months, so we'll be able to follow up on this. So assuming now we're past the gap year, whether you take it or not, or we're into college, um, what sort of uh, view do you have of college? Where does it fit in the development of you know, your worldview, your skills, um, and the satisfaction of your yeah. aspirations um, to do entrepreneur activity, entrepreneurial things to develop education? Uh, personally, I just view college as a means to an end. Um, it's just another tool that I can use. Um, whether I end up um, going to college or not, I feel that um, it's really just a means to an end. Hmm. Okay, but what, what will you, you'll have to pick a major and right. probably a minor. Right. Um, what kinds of things would, would be of interest? Well, I know um, marketing is really important. It's how you get to your consumer base. It's how you get your um, word out. Mm -hmm. So I'd be interested in majoring in marketing because it's invaluable wherever you go. Okay. That would, you'd, you'd be inclined to do that. Any mi minors? Any other courses? You would, how about computer uh, uh, programming, computer science? Um, I was thinking about also minoring in computer science, but I would also probably be inclined to develop that on my own spare time. Ah, interesting. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's true because a lot of, you know, go to the University mm -hmm. of Hawaii, and you, you find a lot of scientists, they learn it on their own time. And they use it because it's all about big data now, and every scientist has to have that. But he's not necessarily going to go take a PhD in the subject. He's going to learn it on his own. And indeed, it's doable these days. Um, OK, so the other thing is, um, where, are you, where are you going to go to school? I mean, big issue for so many kids graduating high school in Hawaii. Where are you going to go to school here? you, you got limited options. You know, some, some are pretty good. Or are you going to go to the mainland and seek, uh, you know, mainland mm, top of the line, excellent education there? Um, I think one of the big problems that Hawaii has is the brain drain. And that's where um, you have a whole bunch of students graduating from high school, and instantly they just leave Hawaii to go to the mainland, to go off island, to go to college. But the problem is that they don't come back. Um, I'm actually more inclined to stay on island for college um, I feel like it's just more cost effective. And as a wise man once told me, you can have a UH experience at Harvard, or you can have a Harvard experience at UH. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to be on the final exam. <laughs> <laughs> We're about out of time, actually, right. David. But I'd like to offer you a minute. Face camera one over there. That, that's that'd right. be camera one. They're just blinking at you. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, t tell them tell them why you are different from every other human being on the planet. What is special about you? What is the essential, David Bernal? Well, most people, they walk away from failure. But I run towards it. I jump into it. And that's what sets me apart. All right. Yeah. Thank you, David. Great discussion. Thank you so much. Thank you. Aloha. Aloha.